Hey guys, I'm Jessie and today I'm wrapping up all the books that I read in the month of September. September was a strange month. I read one book that I absolutely despised, probably the worst book of the year. A bunch of books that were okay. They were good. They're like three stars. And then I did have a few like amazing books, but most of them fall in that good, okay range, which I'm not hating on, but I wish I would have had more like of the amazing books, but I'm still happy. I managed to read eight books, which is shocking because I felt like I read nothing. So as always, I'm going to start out with my least favorite and move up to my favorite book of the month. And the first book I'm going to start with is actually my haven't completed yet. And that is The Gathering of Shadows by B.E. Schwab. If you watched my TBR, you'll see that this has made its way onto my October TBR. Yes, I'm loving it. I'm about halfway, little not quite halfway through, and I'm just excited. I'm enjoying it, but I didn't finish it. So that's all we're going to say about it. This next book is my least favorite book of the month and probably my least favorite book of the year. So just rant for coming. There will be a full video rant on this book, so I'm not going to touch on it too much. And that is Damsel. Oh. It was awful. Like, if I have to hear the word yard used as a euphemism for a man's genitalia one more time, I might vomit. I get what this was trying to do. It is supposed to be like this super feminist overthrow the patriarchy type fairy tale retelling, but I just think it was a little too hard, like a little too direct. Um, none of the characters were really likable at all. And I mean, that's fine with me. I don't need likable characters. Like I love Ren, who is not a likable character, but like I couldn't find their, the main characters. All right. But like, I couldn't find anyone in here that I was like rooting for a whole lot. Like it's just, it's weird, y'all. And there was a part at the end that just was terrible. And I'm like, really? Really, that's where you're going with this? So, yeah, be uh, on the lookout for a full rant. Spoilers abound for Damsel. The next book we're going to talk about is Star Daughter. I gave this three stars. It was good. Um, it wasn't my favorite, obviously, it's, but it wasn't my least favorite of the month. It's good, but it wasn't for me. It, was, it read super young. Like, I know it's YA, but it read very, very young on the young side of YA. Like, it was so much high school drama, and I wasn't about that. Like, it just didn't grab me. It didn't intrigue me. I did love the infusion of Indian culture and mythology that part I loved. I would have loved more of that and less of the high school drama where it seemed like there was like no real stakes. But again, this might be good for someone else. I'm probably going to pass this along because it's a stunning Owl Crate signed edition and I just feel bad keeping it on my shelves when I didn't love it. The next book is Goddess in the Machine. This is one that I did enjoy. Again, I gave it three stars, but it leans a little higher on the three star rating for me. I enjoyed it more than Star Daughter. Um, there were definitely some issues I had with it, hence why it got three stars. There's this weird thing the author does with language that took me a while to get into. It makes sense and it was smart to do. So basically our protagonist, Chrissy Teigen right here, wakes up a thousand years after she's been put into cryo sleep and everyone's worshiping her like a goddess. And she's like, what's going on? And then this one guy, Zale, Zade, Zade is his name, is kind of like her guardian, her 
person that finds her and wakes her up out of stasis. Um, and of course, shenanigans ensue. It's sci-fi. It's YA sci-fi. But the weird thing with the language is after a thousand years, English has progressed to the point where it's almost unrecognizable. And instead of just doing dialogue tags in that, we get full chapters in this weird broken English that adds like ish to the end of words and it like changes words meaning like people would say meteor instead of matter they would say like add ish to like final so it's final ish and it's just a little disorienting when it's like a whole chapter in a character's perspective written that way not just the dialogue tags so i wish it would have just been dialogue written that way but i still liked the story there was definitely like some twists that I was like, yeah, I got you. I saw that coming. And then there was like one or two that I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So this is the first book in a series. I will be picking up the second book whenever it comes out because I want to know what happens. All right. The next book on my list is Rage of Dragons. This was our shelf space book club for the month. And if you missed it, Jesse, May, and I did an entire live show talking about this i will link it down below it's uh quite interesting this is the book that split shelf space it is the civil war book that brought us to our knees and made us a house divided about half of us loved it and half of us did not i fell on the higher end of the spectrum so i am team iron man on this i i enjoyed it was it my favorite no I gave it a, I think on Goodreads, I gave it four stars, but it's definitely like a three and a half four. And it's the ending that made it for me. Like the majority of the way through the book, I'm like, okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like there's a bunch of stuff that annoyed me, but I really enjoyed the ending of this. Um, and I will be picking up the second book. I'm excited to read the second book. I will not be picking it up like right away and prioritizing it as soon as it comes out, but I will pick it up and read it if that makes any kind of sense. Like I like it, but it's not a new favorite. It's definitely a very heavy on the revenge, revenge tale. Like that is all revenge, not any bit more like it's revenge. At the very end, we start seeing, like, bigger overarching plot lines. Um, but, yeah. If you want to see a really good review of this book, I will link Alan's review from the Library of Alexandria. He hated it. And I will link his review down below. And then I will link another review where it talks glowingly of it. So you can see both perspectives. The next book that I got to is Supernova by Marissa Meyer. This was the conclusion of the Renegades trilogy, and I gave this, again, a, like, three and a half stars. I liked it. There was a lot of stuff that I would have done differently, but I liked it. Um, the ending, I wasn't as thrilled with because I liked how it ended, and then there was an epilogue. And the epilogue leads me to believe there's going to be more in this series. But, like, there's not that we know of, at least. So, yeah, I want to know. Like, that epilogue killed, kind of brought down my rating a bit. I also felt like stakes, while they seemed high at the time, like, a lot of things that happened were erased. So, a lot of the negative things that happened to some of our characters, some of the sacrifices they made were were undone and were erased and that kind of bothers me like I like when a sacrifice is made for that sacrifice to be permanent if that makes sense are you like that too like you want to see the sacrifice be permanent not oh I did this but like it's okay because like you're gonna get whatever it is back or fixed or resurrected or whatever in like a couple pages that part bothered me but I did enjoy it I love our characters this was a fun read 
the whole series was really good and I really enjoyed it. So if you want to pick up the Renegade series, I highly recommend it. The second book was my favorite in the series, surprisingly. So take that as you will. It goes two, one, three as far as my ranking of the series. The next one I picked up was Saga Volume 1. I gave this five stars. I loved it. I read it on Kindle Unlimited and I'm going to start Volume 2 here soon. I really want to pick it up in its physical form because I think that is the best way to enjoy a graphic novel is in a physical form. But the fact that it was on Kindle Unlimited, I just needed something quick to read. Um, the only issue I had was I was reading it like a gymnastics practice. And it's not a, uh, a book you want to read in public. There's some scenes that are a little graphic. And if you're just like swiping through and like, you know, somebody walks beside you and then they happen to look down, it's really embarrassing because if you've read volume one of Saga, you know, but I loved the story. I love the very Romeo and Juliet-esque aspects of it from this two like different people who come from different worlds who are supposed to hate each other and they're supposed to be fighting but they fall in love and then they have a baby and then the whole galaxy is basically out to kill them and take their baby. And it's just their story. And it is so good. I mean, I'm excited to continue on with the series. I think there's nine different volumes out right now. Um, it's not completed that I know of, but I'm excited to, to keep on with it. The next book I want to talk about is where dreams to send this, again, was a five-star book for me. I loved every second in it. This is like a YA fantasy, and it gave me super heavy Greatest Showman vibes, and I was living for it. Our main character is a female magician in a world where females aren't really viewed as being able to be stage magicians. They are more cut out for labor like just like using their magic for practical powers and not for the stage well our girl here wants to be a stage magician so she escapes this house that she's in where she's basically working at a nightclub as a showgirl and she runs off to this big city to join this contest where they're basically going to find like the next great showman but of course we hit a lot of obstacles in the road because she's like the only girl in this competition and she's trying to prove herself. And then we have DeMarco, who is one of the judges who's a former magician. He's a little bit older than her, not much. And he is our sweet cinnamon roll type love interest guy. And I just love everything about him. He is fantastic. He made this story for me. He is our Zac Efron character. And our main girl is definitely our Zendaya character. And if that tells you anything, then pick it up. <laughs> I'm so stoked for the second book to come out. I believe it comes out next year in June. So I will be on the lookout for it. And I really hope that Owl Crate does like a pretty edition so I can keep them the same because this is gorgeous. And the last book that I picked up, my favorite book of the month is Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. This is the conclusion to the Broken Earth trilogy. If y'all have been hanging around, you know I loved the Broken Earth trilogy. It was fantastic. Such an amazing story. Gut-wrenching. Heartbreaking. Like, it hit every emotion that I had, and I felt everything so deeply. I cried. I related so much to our main character as soon. She is a mom who just will do absolutely anything in the world for her children, no matter how much it hurts her or anyone else around her, basically. Like she's going to do what she believes is right for her kids, even if it's not actually the right thing to do. But she means well and has a good heart. And basically... This just let, picks up right where we left off in Obelisk Gate. I'm not going to give any spoilers. I will do an entire trilogy talk 
where I discuss the whole thing in spoilers, if you would like. I just think that would be really fun to just gush about it. But, yeah, the series is fantastic. It's weird, but it's fantastic. And I highly recommend you pick this up. The series itself starts off with the end of the world. And these ends of the world happen often. People are like, oh, it's a season. It's a fifth season. Hence the name of the first book. Because, you know, you have four seasons and then the end of the world is a fifth season. And they're, everyone's prepared for them. It's this weird, like, dystopian society. And our main character, Isun, is a mom just living in a village, living her life with her children. And she finds her son, who is, like, four years old, three years old, beaten to death by her husband. And her daughter and husband have disappeared. And it kind of ensues from there. She is what they call an orogeny, which is somebody that can control, like, the movements of Earth, the plates, and the tectonics. And it's really cool because N.K. Jemisin based a lot of this on real, like, geological science. Like, the word orogeny is actually a real thing. Obviously, it's not real people in our real world that can, like, move mountains and create earthquakes and still earthquakes. But it's, like, a real thing it's cool I looked it up but she was very inspired by like real life tectonics which I found fascinating so it's just a soon story and then we follow two other girls so yeah if you haven't read Broken Earth pick it up it's so so good probably one of my favorite series of the year it has risen in the ranks to favorite of all time so pick it up all right that my friends is my wrap-up for the month of September. Really, all in all, it wasn't a bad month. I read a lot. Not a whole lot of great stuff, but I had like three five stars, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right, well, I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.